Hi, Gigi Kids. We just want to say thank you so much for helping us fundraise for Gigi Kids Story. Because of your help, we are able to continue another year with more stories. So we're really excited about that. However, we do have sad news. Even though we did get some money, we didn't get everything we needed. So we are going to be doing the stories only once a month. So at the end of every month, there will be a nice new fresh story from us and nice craft things from Poppy's Glitter Box and other surprises. So don't forget, starting this month, you have one story a month. Well, we hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye. Welcome to Kawaii Stories for Gigi Kids. A place where kids like us will be inspired by awesome Christian stories. Ooh, that must be Poppy. <gasps> She's right on time. Hello, Esther. Are you ready? Oh, I am so excited. And I am, yes, ready, I think, a little bit. Well, I got everything ready last night. I had a very special checklist and I ticked everything off. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I think I haven't packed my tickets. We better get that ready. Um, oh, Esther? Yes? Where is Valentina? I think she's getting ready. No? Actually, I think she's still sleeping. Sleeping? Oh, no, we have to go soon. Let's go wake her up. Valentina, Valentina. What, what day is it? Valentina, wake up. I'm too tired. It's Auntie Nina's day today. We were... It's Auntie Nina's. Let me go get ready. Bye. Well, that got her up. Hi, Gigi kids. You're probably wondering why we're really excited. Well, we're going on a trip. We're going on a plane to see Auntie Nina. So we're very excited and we can't wait to go. Hello boys and girls, it's Poppy here. Today I've got something super special and it's a special hello to one of our listeners. Her name is Melanie Philippa from Queensland, Australia. Hello Melanie, thank you so much for listening to our stories. We really hope you enjoy it. If you would like me to say hello to you as well, just send us an email with your name and where you're from and I'll say how de do. That's all from me. Bye. Okay, I got everything ready. I'm dressed and I just did my hair. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Ready, Poppy? Woohoo! I can't wait. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. You'll be fine. It's all right, Valentina. I actually have an idea. Esther, why don't you tell her the story of May and Ginger when they were on a plane? Ooh, that's a new story. Did you know that May and Ginger went on a plane and they went overseas? That sounds really interesting. But wait, we have to do Puppy's glitter box first. Oh yes, let's not forget that. Come on boys and girls, let's see what's in my glitter box today. In my glitter box today, I want you to draw a picture of you. I want this picture to be as real as you can make it. Put all your lovely hair, the colours and everything that is unique about you. Because you know what? You guys are super special and every one of us are made differently, which makes us super duper special. And I always want you to remember that. So make sure you do that this week and remember how lovely you are and how much God loves you. That's all from me till next time. Bye. May's Culture Dilemma, written by Esther and Steph. May placed one shaky hand into the blue velvet pouch and whispered over and over, Please don't let it be culture. Please don't let it be culture. Please don't let it be culture. She shouted as she read the little piece of paper in her trembling hand. Everyone in the class jumped and then dissolved into hysterical laughter. <laughs> Children, settle, please. Mrs. Mallory, her year four teacher, said, clapping her hands together to get everyone's attention and back on task. I'm sure that May will have some rich cultural experience to share with us. Great. May muttered under her breath, walking away. Uh, what was that, May? Nothing, Mrs. Mallory. May answered sweetly as she plopped onto her seat. I love culture. Isabel, her best friend, said, leaning over to take a peek at the small piece of paper in May's hand. 
What did you get? May asked, a little idea forming in her mind. I got food, Isabel answered excitedly. This project is going to be so much fun. Do you want to swap? May looked at her friend. No, I love what I got. I really want to do food. May's shoulders sagged. I will pay you five dollars to swap, Isabel laughed. <laughs> You are hilarious. She bounced in her seat, her beautiful wild brown curls bouncing happily as well. May, this is going to be the best project ever. May wasn't too sure about that. She opened her mouth to speak when the bell rang. Class, Mrs. Mallory said before dismissing them, please remember that your presentations are due the first week after the holidays. Each one needs to be at least five minutes long with a 350 word report on what you've learned. Have a great and safe break and I'll see you back in three weeks. Good afternoon, 4M. Good afternoon, Mrs. Mallory. The choir of children answered in unison. Dismissed. Everyone raced for the door, except for May. What a crummy way to finish the school term. It was bad enough that they had a project. But what made it absolutely horrible was the fact that she had to talk about why she was different. Her holidays were ruined. During dinner, May was unusually quiet, especially since she was officially on holidays. Normally, she'd be bursting with excitement, chatting with Ginger, who would be lying on a fluffy cushion in the corner of the dining room, telling her parents all the cool things they had done on her last day and eating all the delicious food in front of her. Tonight, however, was different. Ginger purred softly from the corner, looking at May longingly. She barely spoke a word to her parents and she played with her food on her plate. Her heart was heavy, but no one would understand. May, honey, are you all right? You've been awfully quiet, her mother asked, frowning. Very quiet, Blossom, her father agreed, using her pet name for her. What's the matter? Did something happen at school? May looked down at her fingers. She put down the fork and nervously bit her lip. Ginger purred from the corner as if agreeing with her parents. She looked at him and he got up, coming to rub his furry body on her leg. She leaned over and touched him softly. Maybe Ginger did understand how she was feeling. No, nothing happened, she whispered. It was okay. Silence. Not hearing a response, May looked up to find two sets of eyes staring at her. Sighing deeply, she continued. It's just that, that we have a class project to do and there were five different topics we could pick. So to make it fair, Mrs. Mallory got us to draw a topic out of a blue pouch and well, well, I got... Her voice trailed off and she choked back the tears. I got culture. Oh, May, that's great, honey. Her mum exclaimed, clapping her hands excitedly. I don't see the problem, Blossom, her father added. May's teary eyes lifted towards her parents. The problem is that I don't have a culture. I don't belong anywhere. Pushing her chair back from the table, May ran up to her room. Ginger closed behind, his bell jiggling as he trotted up the stairs behind his owner. Mrs. Cutter began to rise from her seat, but her husband grabbed her hand. Honey, let's give her a few minutes, then we'll both go up. Reluctantly, Mrs. Cutter sat back down and tried to eat. But it was useless. She couldn't concentrate. She got up from the table and started picking up the dishes, all the while praying to God to help her little girl find happiness in who she was. Suddenly, her thoughts were broken by a sudden outburst by Mr. Cutter. I've got it! He exclaimed excitedly. I know what to do. Let me make a few calls and then I'll tell you my idea. After the phone calls, May's parents headed to her room. Excitement tickled their stomachs, and they both prayed that the news would excite May too. I really hope your plan works, Mrs. Cutter whispered, knocking softly on May's door. Come in, May squeaked. Opening the door, they saw May sitting in her book corner with Ginger curled in her arms, tears streaming down her face. Mrs. Cutter rushed into May's side and hugged her daughter, whispering soothing words. May only sobbed harder until she had no more tears left and all she could do was sniffle. Oh, darling, Mrs. Cutter said, I don't want to see you cry anymore. You'll be okay. Through sniffles, she whimpered. Can you talk to Mrs. Mallory and, and tell her to give me another topic? 
May's eyes, wet with tears, look pleadingly at her parents. Looking at each other, they moved to sit on the bed and called May to sit between them. May, honey, her mother began. You know, we can't. But you can. When Hannah couldn't do swimming, her mom sent a note and Mrs. Mallory let her sit out. She didn't have to do it. Stroking May's hair, her mother continued. What I mean to say is that I don't want you to run away from your fears or problems, even though it might be hard. May opened her mouth to protest, but her mother put up her hand and stopped her. I don't want you to be ashamed of who you are. Looking down and sulking, May thought it was unfair. Why couldn't she have her big blue eyes like her dad? Or blonde hair like her mum? Instead, her dark eyes were the shape of almonds, and her hair was straight, dark, and cut into a bob. She looked different than her parents, and she hated it. Your mother's right, Blossom, and that's why we have a very special surprise for you, her dad said. May couldn't resist a surprise. Her head shot up. What? What kind of surprise? Her heart started thumping in her chest. Oh, Teddy, what surprise? She bounced on her bed and looked from her mum to her dad and back again. Um, well, I can't actually give it to you just yet until Tuesday, so you will have to wait a few more sleeps. What I can say, however, is that you'll need to pack. Pack? She squeaked. Yes, we are going on a little trip. Mrs. Carter's eyes danced with excitement. A trip? May couldn't believe it. That night in bed, May could only think of the trip. Her thoughts danced all over the place until finally exhausted, she fell asleep with Ginger curled at her feet. Tuesday couldn't come soon enough for May. She was so excited she could hardly contain herself. Daddy, can you tell me the surprise? Where are we going? Her father laughed. I'll give you another clue. We need to go to the airport. The airport? May squealed loudly as she started jumping around in excitement until she abruptly stopped and remembered one very important detail. <gasps> Ginger! Oh, Daddy, I can't leave Ginger. I just can't! She panicked. Her father smiled and looked past May as her mother rounded the corner with Ginger in one arm and his cage in another. We wouldn't leave him, she exclaimed. But, but, her father continued grabbing the cage from Mrs. Cutter's hand, we have to check him in and they will put him with all the other animals travelling on the plane. May looked at Ginger and rubbed him softly. Sorry you have to be alone with other animals, but it's better than leaving you behind. Ginger only purred and licked her hand. A few hours later, the Cutters were sitting on the plane, buckling seatbelts and getting comfortable. The flight attendant gave some really cool instructions on what to do in case of an emergency. And May sat still, fascinated. When that was over, she heard the captain's voice come over the speaker, welcoming all the passengers on board. But it was his last sentence that caught her attention. And we hope you have a smooth and enjoyable flight to Japan. May blinked a few times and stared at her parents. She whispered. Her parents nodded and smiled. We think it's time for you to visit the country you were born in, her mother said, patting her hand. May nodded, still in shock. She was going to her birth country? Her stomach danced with nervous and excited butterflies. What would Japan be like? Please turn off your mobile devices or put them in airplane mode until... The flight attendant's voice spoke, but May's mind still couldn't concentrate. Turning to her parents, she finally had to ask, Japan? We always knew we would bring you. And now it looks like the perfect time, her mother started to say. And we want you to be proud of where you come from, her father continued as he patted her hand. I don't understand, May admitted. Her mother took a deep breath and looked into her eyes. We want you to know that you have two cultures, May, and that you belong to both. You are Japanese because of your parents and Australian because we adopted you. Is that why you have Sensei Asato teach me Japanese every week? May asked as if the puzzles were coming together. Yes, that's right. We want you to learn your native language. So we found Sensei to tutor you, her mother answered. Now sit back and chew this gum, it will help your ears and not get blocked when the plane takes off. May stuffed the grape-flavoured hubba-bubba in her mouth. Mmm, her favourite. It didn't take long for May to get restless, but thinking of poor Ginger in his cage put an end to all and every complaining she might have done. May, honey, wake up, she heard her mum say. 
She sounded so far away. We're about to land and look! Down there it's Tokyo, Japan's capital city. May blinked a few times. Where were they? Oh yeah, she was on a plane and she was in Japan. May quickly woke up and rubbed her sleepy eyes. She pushed her face against the plane window and looked down at the place she had come from. A dash of excitement began to form in her stomach. Before she knew it, they had landed, collected their luggage and Ginger, who was still a little drowsy from the special tablet they gave him, so he wouldn't be scared during the journey. Okay, her father said energetically, not feeling tired at all. He was used to flying all the time for business trips, but she felt exhausted. Tomorrow, I want us to head out at 9am after breakfast. We can start at Harmony Adoption Center so that you can see where we first saw you and then we can go on a tour around the city. Sounds like a plan? He asked happily. Mrs. Cutter in May only nodded and yawned. Okay. They knew tomorrow was going to be a big day. The next afternoon, three very exhausted Cutters walked through the door of the hotel room. What a day it had been. May couldn't remember when they had walked so much. She couldn't believe how different everything was. But oh, how wonderful. Although May felt tired, she couldn't go to sleep just yet. She had to document first. She didn't want to forget her first day's adventure. Flopping down on the bed, she took out her journal and pencil case and began to write down and draw all she had seen. Mm, let's see she said mumbling to herself. Oh, I know, she said remembering what she had seen first. The gigantic skyscraper buildings in the city. She'd felt like an ant almost amongst the giant buildings, not to mention how crowded it was. She could barely move around. May suddenly looked down at her hands, remembering how tight she'd held onto her mom's hand. She did not want to get lost here. What's next? She said looking over at Ginger as if he would know. He'd been tucked up safely in the kitty daycare. Then she remembered their snack break. How could she forget? They had had a morning tea stop at a side restaurant and it was funny because May couldn't eat with the chopsticks. She ended up using her fingers and even stabbing the sushi right through the middle. May giggled remembering the look of horror on the lady's face sitting at the table next to them as she'd held the sushi like a lollipop and kept eating. But the best part she could remember was the, the, what was it? She asked, trying to remember. She ran to her little red backpack and pulled out a small paper where dad had written down the name, then raced back to write it down. Cordy poo, she repeated. Crepes. May licked her lips as she drew the delicious crepe filled with fresh cream, chocolate drizzle and strawberries folded in one amazing tasty treat. Mmm. I wonder if I'll be allowed to have one every day that we're here. May wondered, already thinking of other flavours. <gasps> Yum! Closing her journal, she rolled onto her back. She couldn't wait for tomorrow. The rest of the week went by just as fast and exhausting. Before May knew it, it was time to go home. As the plane took flight, May looked out the window until Japan disappeared beneath the clouds. What an amazing, amazing adventure. Finally sitting back in her seat, May reached for her journal and began flipping through the pages, reminiscing about the last few days. She stopped at the page where she had drawn about Hanami Festival, Cherry Blossom Festival, and smiled. She had decided that although she loved the Kuri Ippo, the grapes, visiting the blossom trees were her favourite. Closing her eyes to remember the day, May could still feel the cool breeze as she and her parents had sat beneath a blossom tree for a special picnic. They had listened to people perform karaoke, tasted different fruits from the market stalls around, and watched the family spend time together cooking on the barbecue. There had been so many people that day, but one she would never forget. May opened her eyes and kept looking through her journey until she reached the special photo that Dad had taken of May at the Gisha house wearing the traditional kimono. Ginger had come with her that day and had happily stood beside her. Both the cutters looked at May and smiled as they saw her looking at the photographs. She really liked seeing photos with people that looked just like her with beautiful almond eyes, shining hair and smooth skin. May looked at her parents and whispered, I love having two cultures and I love that you are my parents. 
She leaned over and planted big loud kisses on her parents' cheeks. Everyone laughed, but May laughed the loudest. She felt so happy inside. Her heart was jumping with joy. She couldn't wait to go back to school and do a huge presentation of her two cultures. Her friends were going to love it. Wow, that was such a cool story. I didn't know May was adopted. I know, and it's so good to see that she's finally accepting who God made her to be. I know, but how much longer can we land? We're actually landing almost now. Really? Yes, so make sure your seatbelt's on. Yep, I don't. I'm all buckled in. Oh, my luggage is a little bit too heavy. <laughs> I think I packed too much. Hey, look! There's Auntie Nina! Hi! Oh, Auntie Nina, hello! Hello, girls! Welcome back! It's lovely to see you! Remember, Auntie Nina, last time I came, it was just me. But now we have Valentina and Poppy. I haven't seen you in ages! I'm so excited! Can you help me carry my luggage? Of course, Valentina, of course. I love you. Lovely to see all of you. Thank you. Okay, let's get going, everyone. Yay! Bye! Bye! Hmm, I think I'll put the picture of me on my fridge. <laughs> and don't forget that you are Gigi Kids, gorgeous in God's image. <laughs>